it takes understanding to cure the powerlessness of the church the average believer is still in confusion and even frustration as to why we do not see certain levels of commitment from God and by God over our lives it seems as though there are a few people who have secured the commitment of God in their lives it seems as though there are a few organizations ministries individuals men and women of God who seem to have commanded the attention of heaven in an unusual way power trails their life that everywhere they move the power of God seems to move there why is that so Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 let me start from there the Bible says and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries popular scripture but the people that do know their God everybody say their God shall be number one strong strength capacity and number two they shall do exploits not just talk exploits not just hope and wish for exploits the people that do know their God he never said the people that do know God do know their God that means it has to do with a personal revelation he has to be your God the people that do know their God not their neighbor's God not their man of God's God as wonderful as that is he must become your God a personal revelation and a personal encounter the Bible leaves you with a promise that if you do press to know God as your God number one that you shall be strong capacity strength stamina empowerment number two he says you will do exploits your life will never be average your life will never be small that you will become such a useful tool in the hands of God he will do much with your life are we together praise the name of the Lord so the people that do know their God they shall be strong and they shall do exploits now please look up there are two things about God you need to know the Bible says we should know God but the desire to know God alone does not make you know him you have to understand the aspects of God that you should know please pay very close attention there are two principal dimensions of God or information about God you must know number one is his nature the first thing you need to know about God according to this scripture is his nature if you do not know the nature of God the devil will deceive you and cheat you on many fronts and on many grounds for instance the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate that he is slow to anger and he is rich in love that awareness about the nature of God will help you in relating with God without fear that even though he's a warrior even though he's a lion even though he's a mighty God you have to realize that all of those supposedly fierce attributes are not just for you when it has to do with your relationship with God there are names you should know about God that he is father that he loves you that you are part of that family he is responsible over you say the nature of God you cannot excel in life without a thorough understanding of the nature of God if someone looks at me now for instance and says apostle God is angry with you and he said he will kill you or destroy you I will congratulate the person and allow him go home in peace and believe me I will go to my room and lie down and sleep I'm not going to wake up and panic and say ah God do you know why there is something about the nature of God the nature of God that gives you security even with the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit there is something about the nature of God 
why are we not afraid of the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilences the destruction that wastes in noonday there is something about god that we know you've heard me say it if god says right now that he's going to bless 10 people i will start praying for the remaining nine because i have found something about his nature i have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. It's, it's not an empty boast. There is something about the nature of God that if you do not know, you will accept anything Satan and men bring to you about God. Are we together now? This is one of the reasons why we learn Jesus through scripture. Because I have taught you here that among the many things that Jesus came to do in his earth work was that he came to correct our idea about God. The prophets and all who gave types and shadows of the revelations of God in the Old Testament, listen carefully, they, some of them revealed what they wrote as humans based on their limitations. Some of them, it was the bias of their encounters. And so they wrote all kinds of things. When you study the Old Testament, you will not like in its entirety you may not like everything about God you find there because there are many many renditions that seem to suggest that God does certain things for instance you would hear the Bible say that a lying spirit came from the Lord you see and people have their perspectives and their opinions but now I told you until Jesus came everybody had a right to suspend his passion and his knowledge of God but when Jesus came, he now said, watch me as a correction. Now begin to correct that script. All of the script that they wrote about God, watch my life. And anything you see me do, anything you see me manifest, go back to your understanding about God and search there and think. If he says God is love, don't believe him until you see me demonstrate love. If you find me demonstrate love, you can go back and say it is true that God is love. So everything Jesus did not do in his earth work is not captured within the character of God. Are we together now? Yes. The nature of God. Number two, the second thing we need to know about God, and that's, that's where I'm, what I'm dealing with tonight, is the will of God. The Bible says the people that do know their God and I'm breaking that knowledge of God that principally there are two things you need to know about God to excel. Number one is his nature. Number two, his will. If you understand the nature of God and you understand the will of God, then indeed you are fortified with power, capacity, and you are ready for exploits. Hallelujah. Now write this down, please. You command power in this kingdom. You command power in this kingdom to the degree to which you understand and walk in the will of God. You command power in this kingdom to the degree to which you understand and walk in the will of God. The administration of the power of God is not haphazard. Just because you are a Christian does not mean you will see the power of God at work in your life. Just because the Bible says it. Uh -uh. The administration of the power of God and the authority of the kingdom is defined within the circumference of his will. That means outside of the will of God, there is no guarantee for the power of God to work for you. Are, are, you, are you understanding now? This is very important. So when you see certain people in the body of Christ and when you see certain people in the kingdom look fearfully powerful, powerful in deeds, powerful in results, powerful in words, it is not that they are intrinsically powerful. It is because the power that they derived is because they have been able to find the will of God and they have pegged themselves at the center of his will for them this is very important 
Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you, always laboring fervently for you in prayer. What is the content of his prayer? That ye may stand perfect and complete or entire in all the will of God. Someone please shout it. Say, all the will of God. Not some. He's praying. Epaphras is praying. And he's saying that he's praying for you, laboring fervently in prayer, that you will have access to all the will of God because your victory, your relevance, your security is found in his will. No wonder many believers continue to live defeated lives. Because they do not understand the concept of the will of God, nor have they placed value on what can happen to a life when you are at the center of his will. Let me tell you this up front. In this kingdom, your immunity is in the will of God. Your relevance is in the will of God. Your longevity is in the will of God. If Satan really wants to attack you, let me tell you how Satan attacks classically. I have taught you this. He finds a way of drifting you away outside of the will of God. The moment Satan brings you out of the will of God, he does not need to fight you again. Your disalignment becomes a weapon against you.